<laughs> Hello, everyone. Uh, okay, so you, I can start. Um, to all of you, I am Marie Claire from Concept Collective, which is a performance art group that um, explores concepts through art and engineering. A big concept we're working with right now is community and what that looks like to us. So here we are with the state of the world, just trying to figure out how to create community and keep and, and stick together in these times. So that's me, that's what I'm about, art and things. Yeah, and um, I'm Marie, the other Marie from <laughs> Root Optics, Eminem here. Um, and <laughs> I am a consultant for uh, new businesses and reestablishing um, new uh, old businesses and just trying to make sure that the structure and communication is working appropriately um, so that you can be as successful and have that whole work-life balance, um, you know, goal, you know, living the dream. So that's actually how I met Marie. Yeah. Um, <laughs> your friends. Shout out, <laughs> Shout out to Carol. <laughs> Carol, sorry we failed on the book group. Um, <laughs> yeah. like, I'm not even showing up the first week. I'll do it next <laughs> week. Um, <laughs> Marie, why don't you tell us a little bit about how we came about doing this webisode and what we're going to be doing in the future webisodes? Yeah, okay. Um, so we did meet through Divine Happenings. Both of us are really um, interested in building these communities. We have great visions for ourselves and for the people around us. And so naturally, when the world struck catastrophe, we wanted to, we didn't know exactly what to do about it. And Marie actually came to me um, in a conversation and just said, hey, there's a lot of things that are going on in the world, we've got a, a, a pandemic, uh, we have a disease pandemic, COVID is happening, then we've got a racial pandemic that's happening, and what is it that we can do to really be effective in our communities and, and keeping each other safe? Um, so on it, my first thing was to say, hey, let's just, what we're doing right now is actually really effective. We have a conversation once a week about our businesses and Marie's helping me with my business. She's incredible. So naturally we decided that the mo the best thing we could do for our businesses and for ourselves as individuals is start this conversation. We don't necessarily have any answers yet, but that's why we're here to figure out what these things mean to us, justice, change, safety, Let's start dissecting these words and um, really building an action plan for ourselves. And yeah, so here we are. Yeah, so, you know, we're, uh, I am getting some messages that some people are having a little bit of a hard time getting into the webinar. Okay. Um, for those who are in here, if you could please like type a comment, give us your name um, or where you're from, because your name pops up in there, sorry. <laughs> where are you from and kind of like what, what uh, topics are um, hitting you most right now. I also have a poll um, that I have up right now, um, considering current events, how are you feeling? Um, so I'd like you to go ahead and fill that out. And uh, we really like to make sure that we're checking in with everybody. Um, this is uh, the a new platform for us, so please be kind and patient. Uh <laughs> Um, we definitely want conversation. We want people to, to chat and talk and eventually we'd like to get breakout groups and really dig in um, more and more. And hi, Russ from Lincoln, uh, <laughs> who helped us put this whole thing together. <laughs> Shout out. <laughs> this is uh, this event is uh, is being hosted by Idlewild Festivals and is sponsored by um, the Concept Collective and Root Optics. And we have a link in our offers for the Concept Collective. If you'd like to buy some swag and support a new entrepreneur, Marie has been working very hard. Um, that Marie, not this one. I don't do anything. Um, <laughs> she works incredibly hard. Around being modest. Um, <laughs> Oh, good. Okay. It looks like, um, uh, let's see. We're, hold on. Sorry. This is new, and I have people texting me. Um. <laughs> okay. I want to get everyone in. So, anyway, if you miss this one, it'll, be re it'll play again later. <laughs> All right. Good morning, SoCal. Yay. 
Kenya. Woo, uh, Kenya, shout out. That's my girl. I love her. Hi, Kenya. <laughs> So we're going to go ahead and dig into it. Um, if you ha have a question on the bottom right hand corner where it says chat mode, you can click on that and we'll switch it to a question. Um, and that way it kind of lights it up for us. Um, for right now, we won't be taking extra speakers, but in the coming weeks, we will uh, rotate out hosts and we'll have guests and we just really want to keep. Oh, hi, Carol. <laughs> Uh, we want to keep this conversation as dynamic and as possible and um, and uh, growing and building as we go. Uh, so let's dig into it. So we have three key concepts that we really want to have um, you take away today and an action item. So that's kind of how we, we built it. So um, Marie, take it away. <laughs> yeah. OK, so um, the first one that we can also pose as a question and just kind of get our brains tingling is what can you do? You know, what can we do? What can I do with everything that's happening in the world? Um, how do we get actionable um, and become active? So one thing that we talk about a lot is getting involved. You know, how do we get involved with our communities? A big conversation that we had also with Russ shout outs was, um, about politics, that's a really good way to get involved. So I, we can really move into that conversation. I know sometimes people talk about wanting to do something right now. Politics is often a slow process. So there is a lot to unpack there. And maybe it's something we can really also dig into in future conversations, but there are things we can do to start educating ourselves right now about the influence we have as local voters. There's a national election coming up too. So another, which leads us into another thing that we can do is research. And maybe you have questions or maybe you just have thoughts that you ponder and don't know much about it, but research and doing your own research is like a really good thing that we can do right now to start being active. Yeah. And, you know, finding finding a, a supportive base uh, to have the conversations and to flounder. That's been something that a lot of people have talked to. They're they're worried about talking about anything political. You know, you don't you don't talk about politics and religion um, because people get very passionate and they have very deep rooted feelings about it. And um, I, I get that. And we need to respect that. But we also need to be able to feel comfortable enough to to flounder a little bit and say like, hey, I, I think this is a good idea. What do you guys think? And not get shot down and feel like, you know, um, <laughs> that yeah. your words are, are dumb or being, not being heard. Um, yeah. So yeah, so that was that was the big one is what can you do? There's a lot you can do and and just literally doing anything is helpful. Um, the, the second big takeaway was who does this affect? Um, everyone. <laughs> Every single person. <laughs> everyone. Really? Um, it, it affects absolutely everyone on every scale. Um, COVID, Black Lives Matter, um, the restructure of our government, uh, just the the way that your grocery store is being run. <laughs> Everything yeah. affects everyone. Um, and so that's why we're starting these conversations. And, and again, we're trying to make it as uh, as dynamic and impactful and actionable as possible. So that's the biggest thing is uh, we are all affected by what's going on. Um, so what, what can we do about it? Right. And, you know, um, that'll leave us to our action plan later. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <It's low>. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, so I kind of would like to hear from you guys, um, I, I hope you're filling out that poll. We are going to close that out soon, and uh, I want to know what you know. What have you have you have you guys been affected by this? You know, uh, what have you done? What can you do? Um, or, or are you having any roadblocks? Is there anything that's just getting in your way and um, you can't see a way around it? You know, that's that's the kind of stuff that we really want to do breakout sessions for and um, have more dynamic conversations about and, and uh, bring in experts. You know, if you're like, you know what, I don't really get how COVID works. Totally get it. Like not everyone's, a, you know, scientist. You know? <laughs> <laughs> right. um, yeah, this guy looked at me funny, and I think he gave me COVID. Um, <laughs> like, if, if that's what you want to know, if you want to know how you can be effective with Black Lives Matter, like, there's a lot of things in your area. There's a lot of um, 
uh, uh, things that you can do. So please reach out to us and let us know. Um, yeah. And I want to add too that as our community grows, as we start to come together and talk about these things more, we open ourselves up to other resources that we may not um, have known were available beforehand. But also we have like a direct connect. There's so many things and there's lots of organizations. And especially when it comes to politics, there's a million different ways that you can start. And that can be really overwhelming. Um, but I think the key is to just go where you're called towards right now and see where that leads you. And then, hey, we have a place here where we can come back and reorganize our thoughts, reassess our individual action plans to say, OK, how can I link with the people that are in my community to, to do those more like meaningful? Now you have organizations that will mean something directly to you and to those who are in your network. So that's important. Yeah. And um, on that note, uh, we're a little ahead of schedule. So I actually want to take a second um, and I would like I, the concept collective, this, the whole reason we're doing this was because of how passionate Marie was about the, or is about the concept collective. Um, and it's just so interesting to me to think about how artists uh, work together in a safe and creative space and how political conversations could very easily work that way as well and bounce off each other. And you're coming to the table with different, um, different uh talents and skills and um you know it's just it's interesting looking at these comments you know like uh sarah you're saying uh those passionate discussions are what we've missed out on knowing how to talk without getting mad is important um it is but it also is important to get mad <laughs> sometimes <laughs> so yeah. um, just hearing those different ideas and really being able to bounce off of them. That's, that's to me what the concept collective is all about. So uh, thank you, Marie, for coming up with that super cool idea. Uh, You're welcome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and thank you for helping me organize it. I just honestly wouldn't be here without you and all that you do to kind of create this platform for me and for all the other artists out there. So uh, we get, you know, I think artists do have a really passionate voice. Uh, it's not always like a verbal voice. We use our art to put our expressions out in the world. And I think right now the world could stand to listen to the artists and, and what we have to say. If we want to know how to get through a conversation, being able to manage our emotions, whether you're mad or whether you just want to know how to make space for someone who's mad and not let their anger affect you, then let's think about ways that we can express ourselves constructively that maybe release us from verbal conversation, but we can, you know, kind of play with that a little bit and see what it looks like. So that's really what the concept collective is about and is about making space for how to communicate with each other when maybe words just don't suit the occasion. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of, of ways to kind of filter that into it. So that actually brings us to our third takeaway. Um, and that's that's all you were. <laughs> okay, number three. <laughs> <laughs> the third takeaway from this conversation, we've talked a lot about, uh, you know, what can we do? Where do we start? And who is this affecting? These are all good questions, but the most actionable, how are we going to be the most effective in our communities as change makers or creators? Uh, number three is find your niche. You know, what what do you feel called to? What is your inner voice leaning you towards? We all have something that, um, think about them like gifts. I'm going to get really like sentimental here. Okay, guys, you got to think that everybody's been given a unique gift or skill, or maybe just a thought pattern, something that you think about perspective, a way that you see things that nobody else will see. So, as you can see, my niche is art. I use art to express the things that I can't say any other way, or do, this is how I'm effective. I may not be the kind of person that's gonna go out and protest, but I can make a playlist and get my feelings out that way. I may not know exactly what's go how to express my feelings about what's happening with COVID and how I've been affected by it, but I can 
put it in a presentation and make it, you know, artful in that sense. So you just have to find what you're called to do. And, and that's really what, that's the best way to be actionable in this moment. Yeah. And I, it's, it's funny when you had mentioned the playlist um, before we were talking about this and I am terrible at putting together, <laughs> playlists, but a good playlist really gets me going. Like, I, you know, if I'm, in a funk or if I'm trying to get inspired and but I just really suck at putting them together. <laughs> it's, yeah, this is the, the bouncing off of, um, of each other that helps us, you know, uh, make progress because I need that inspiration. You know, I need that playlist so that I can get up and get moving and, and get that passion going in the right direction. Um, yeah. And I already know, just because I know Marie, I know that that playlist is going to be awesome. Um, and so it, that trust is important. It's really important to trust the people and be able to be vulnerable around them and enough to um, to have these hard conversations. Um, so that's really what brought us here today is um, those top three, you know, what can you do? Who does this affect? And what's your niche? Um, those That's a lot to think about. <laughs> <It is. laughs> um and uh, yeah, it, it's it's more than any one person can take on. So um, a lot of what we'll be doing in the next couple weeks is um, is really trying to break it down. So some weeks aren't going to be as much your forte, but other weeks will. And the, the more you speak up and make requests, the more we can fine tune it to something that really resonates with you. Um, and then invite people. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> if you have a, a charity that you want to support, um, we want people, we want to filter these people. If you have, you know, if you want to donate money, donate it to this group. This this group really needs it. Um, <laughs> if you want to support <laughs> new businesses, buy a sticker. Um, if it's not financial, then, do, you know, donate your time or, um, you know, spend a little bit of time just uh, reaching out to uh, actually Marie, you, you said it best. This is the, the actionable part. Um, so create an action plan today. And I, I, I'm going to let you go. Cause you, you were way more eloquent. About it than I was. <laughs> uh, well, I, you know, okay. Action plan. You know, what does that look like? How do we, the, the whole question is how do we even start with an action plan? What can we take away from this conversation and do instantly? A lot of what we talk about is a process and it is about growth. And a lot of this is also a personal journey. So even though we're here as a community today, a lot of what we're going to be doing through these next couple of weeks is figuring out our personal voice. And um, so that's, that's going to take that that's process that's going to take a while um but we understand there's a need to want to be active instantaneously so what can you do right now the second that we get off of this phone uh or off of you know your laptop computer device whatever off of the conversation um to be actionable uh build build an action plan build an outline build a blueprint for yourself the best way that we can go forward and be strategic about it is to have an outline and a, a sense of direction for where you're going, you know? So, um, and no one's going to be able to create what that plan looks like for you, but you. So these things like finding your niche, there's a lot of other, you can be inspired and even influenced by other things, but uh, it's a good time to listen to that inner voice. And, and like I said, kind of go where you're called to, what can you do? Call somebody. If you if you're not sure exactly what's going on and how you think about it, give somebody a call. Ask them. Call your neighbor. Call whoever's in your contact. Who who have you not checked on in a while in your contact list? You know what I'm saying? If you're feeling a little bit riled up, call your congressman. Introduce yourself. If you feel like you're being called to the political route, then call up get involved with your local community and see how you can be effective and active, introduce yourself, ask them to introduce themselves. Good politicians will take the time to speak to you when you show up and tell them that you're concerned and that you care about the community that you're in. So see how that goes. And then if that's not your story, well, now, you know, you've got to start and you can figure out 
what that's going to look like for you. Everybody's going to have a different journey. So the best way to go about that journey is to prepare yourself, have an idea and start there. And if you have no idea where to start, play around with a couple things, start asking yourself questions, ask other people questions in your community, come back around, ask me questions. You can always find me at concept.studio. So I'll be here. You can <laughs> holla at me, send me a message, just say, girl, I have no idea what you're talking about. Nothing makes sense to me right now. What's go what, what is an action plan? And then we could talk about it, so. Yeah, and so, some people do better with like a, a physically written out format. Like you just That's like a fill in the blank. We can make that for you. There's there's a lot of, of ways to go about it. And um, I'm seeing in the comments, um, so uh, I'm delving into stoicism as a planning philosophy. That is a big one I've been hearing a lot about lately. Stoicism, you know, that's something to look into um, and finding groups that are um, kind of uh, re-educating themselves in a new perspective. Um, that can be really helpful. And it, it get, again, it goes back to the artists. Um, I, I'm surrounded by artists and I am not one at all. You see be beautiful paintings behind me are 90% my husband. Uh, <laughs> uh, but I, I'm surrounded by artists and I've watched their journey and it cracks me up because they'll make this art and then they'll trash it and they'll be like, it's garbage. And they're so hard on themselves. And, you know, after watching them for years and years and years, you see their craft really fine tune and you find, you see, they find their artistic voice. Talking about politics is exactly, <laughs> Carol lies. <laughs> Um, it's the same exact thing. You know, you have to be kind to yourself when you are crafting your unique voice in politics, in even religion, in like, in yeah. art, in everything you do, in your relationships you have with other people. It's a craft. And being unkind to yourself and trashing your efforts isn't making you stronger. It's just making you more frustrated. So we have this beautiful opportunity to find all these great uh, like-minded folks that <laughs> would just like to have a, a kind conversation and we'd like to be better. Um, let's see, talking about the things we can do, how can we reach people that are not aware slash in denial about the current situation? That's a great question. Um, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> um, Martha, that's an incredible question. And I think um, there, there are multiple ways that this could be answered. My, my personal view on this is that uh, some, not everybody, especially you talking about denial, you know, not everybody wants to be aware and awake to the things that are going on around them. And Oftentimes, when you put yourself in a conversation with people who don't see these things, unless they're in a position to emotionally and like mentally take on the conversation, they won't they won't do it. So you're going to really talk about being kind to yourself. The best thing you can do to be kind to yourself is really like a, be that beacon and uh, be attracted to those who are in the same conversation that you are, because then we can really build the energy that way. But if we keep putting ourselves in circles with people who don't see the same things that we do, then it's a little, it, I don't know, it's, they don't always have the same compassion in the conversation and may not be in the same place to manage their emotions or find strategies and solutions because they don't necessarily see anything wrong. So, yeah. You know, that's a tough one. Yeah, having um, creating a platform in which they feel safe is something that could be a good start, um, and that that takes a lot of restraint when when you're talking to somebody who's telling you the sky is purple and you're like, yeah, it's it's blue. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Um, but actually, that is something that next week we're going to dig into a lot more. So next week episode is is going to be about how to have a conversation. Mm. Uh, and that's and again, like we're not experts. We're just people trying to figure it out. So the more we have um, 
you know, conversations about this, the, the more we can all grow and work on it together. But, you know, those very close minded people are so used to coming up against a fight that they assume anything you say is just putting them down. So just as a quick thing to work on this week is maybe consider validation. You can validate somebody's opinion. They have a valid opinion without agreeing with their opinion. Mm -hmm. Or um, also prepare. Oh, yeah. Keep going. Yeah. Go ahead. I was going to say, also prepare yourself for debate. If you don't necessarily, if you want to stand strong with what you're saying and you're going to take the opportunity to enter a conversation with the intent to change a person's mind, you have to make room for the fact that you may not. So if you want to take the opportunity to bounce, see another person's perspective without losing your own, that's what debate is for. But de debate is a very specific kind of conversation. And you, it, I mean, in a way, yes, you are trying to change that person's mind, but ultimately, if they're set in their ways and you're set in your ways, you guys can go at this for however long. So just be mindful of that, because if you don't want to get stuck in this loop of going back and forth in a conversation, then step in, play and debate as much as you want. And then when you're ready, when you before you get to that point of being emotionally exhausted, just step out of the conversation and then go find somebody who you can release that into and who will absolutely, you know, share the same or at least be compassionate in that energy with you. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's, I mean, and that, that's really it just, um, it's it's so it's so hard. That's why we started this. We were like, I, I don't know. What do you do? Like, I, how do you want me to act? How do you? Like, <laughs> yeah. What do you want me to do? Um, in it, it's just starting somewhere, literally anywhere. And and you know you might fall on your face a little bit, and you might watch other people fall on their face, and just be kind and you know gentle nudges. That's that's a good way to start, and know when to walk away. And it's like Russ said. Um, uh, you have to know when you hit a wall. Um, <laughs> some people just come up to you and they're already a wall. Um, yeah, and you for know, real, absolutely. Not a mistake. Um, <laughs> uh, BJ said principles of Matt can help. I don't absolutely. know who that is. So now I'm going to look it up. <laughs> yes, absolutely. There's a lot of information that you can find. If you look up my art, you'll really be inter introduced into, oh, a world of incredible information that will teach you a different kind of spiritual practice. So it's definitely something to kind of step into. Yeah. Um, so, and then we also have a comment. If you want to change the world, start with yourself, Muhammad Gandhi. Um, I don't know if any of, of you course. know, you have a quote from Muhammad Gandhi on um, one of these pages as you're registering. And the reason for that is that we call this be the change because that's traditionally known as a Gandhi um, reference. However, there is actually no written documentation of him ever actually saying that. I have um, no the, idea. Yeah, the quote I put up there is the quote that other people took and re, you know, like reinterpreted. So it's actually it's a great uh, um, example of how words can be changed and you know given completely different meaning. And I mean, it's it's the same meaning, but it, it has a different context. And um, things change over time. And it's like it's the big game of telephone. We're all playing the big game of telephone. So somebody may have gotten the wrong message and they're defensive about it because that's the information they got. So let's be kind and like help them find the appropriate valid resources. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, if they're open to it, but you know, don't, don't beat yourself up. If the people you're surrounded by are, aren't really listening, then get, get out there, invite them to stuff like this. Um, you know, uh, let's get the like-minded community together, but let's also get some of the other non-like-minded community out there and just try to find a way to integrate ourselves into one community. Like we are all affected by this, by everything going on. So um, let's try to get on the same page. Um, oh, BJ, that's the funny thing about quotes. Yeah, there's actually a website where you can look up quotes. <laughs> that's where I found this out because um, there's a lot of just, seriously misrepresented quotes out yeah. there. <laughs> and it took like two minutes to, to look up and read an article on the history of this one specific quote. Um, 
then it's something that now is in my brain and I know it. So, I mean, it's that doing your research. <laughs> yeah, doing um, your research is really important. Yeah. Getting your facts straight um, and speaking from a factual place rather than an emotional place. Because I think we're all very emotional right now. <laughs> yes, for sure. Yeah. yeah. And the more you research a thing, the more you intimately become knowledgeable about that subject. So you'll find not just that you're interested in a topic, but why maybe it suits that that talent or that skill or that niche that you have. So research, I honestly love research. You can get really wrapped into a rabbit hole, but these rabbit holes are really what build your experience on a thing. So, yeah, it's really cool. You know, it's, I, I love that we have so much access to it. And that's, uh, you know, I've been told repeatedly by Russ in the last couple of days that we we're in a bubble in California. So those of you who are in California, yes, we are in a bubble. Yeah, yeah. I've said this myself. So, yeah. you know, I can walk into a Trader Joe's and start up a conversation with somebody about Taoism. And yeah. <laughs> to know about it um and i'd like other people to feel that too uh, mike said he just looked up matt and there are seven principles truth justice harmony balance order reciprocity and propriety yes thank you for adding that thank you so I much would. that's yeah. great and then bj said ask yourself what does it mean to know um the, that's question, actually bj yeah, I, I have a lot of frustrating conversations with people about saying, I know this happened. And I'm like, do you know that <laughs> happened? Do you think that happened? <laughs> well, I know, based off of how these people were before. Right. And you think that happened. You assume that happened. It's likely it happened, but you don't know it happened. <laughs> right, exactly, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have everything. to be willing to take in the fact that everything we experience is our interpretation of life. So my interpretation is going to be different than your interpretation, Marie. So everything, we have to just make room for everybody's truth in that way. If we're going to talk about what we know, okay, well, you can know what you know, but you also have to make space for the fact that somebody might know differently than you. And Mm -hmm. We can get in an argument about what each of us knows, but in that way, it's like, you're, you know, this is when we get into that conversation about who's trying to dismantle this truth or that. If that's not really what we want to be about, then it's okay for somebody else to know something differently than you and for you to just stand true with what knowledge, wisdom, and truth mean to you, you know? Yeah. And, you know, this is this is just the, the tip of the iceberg, you know, just trying to get uh, get a direction going. Um, and uh, OK, so I had a question. Uh, what's next for this group and what's the plan? Um, so what's next for this group is we want to meet uh, Thursdays at 11. It's a random time I picked out. So as a group, if we need to do a different time, I'm cool with that. But uh, I want to start encouraging people to come in and talk and grow together. And um, and uh, we, I want to get different guests in here. I want to hear different opinions and challenge everybody um, to to really think outside of the box and put put your your pride and your emotions aside for maybe a second. And, yeah. uh, hear somebody really hear where they're coming from and understand that maybe you don't know their life maybe you can't completely understand their pains and their frustrations but you can validate it and you can make them feel safe and comfortable enough to continuously speak out and maybe band together and i know um one of our people were they were saying that they really love to see us all band together and do a physical action in some way like yeah. um take over the capitol building <laughs> <laughs> Some people, <laughs> that, that could be cool for some people, you know, but maybe not for everyone, but <laughs> we kind of find people that are like-minded and want to make action plans together. So it might, you might not just be on an island. Um, so that's what I'm hoping for. Marie, what about you? Um, I would say what's next for this group is strategy, you know, 
we're all looking for something that we want to do. And committing to this path means that strat- we'll, uh, if we continue to come together, continue to have these conversations, continue to go on our own personal journeys, and continue with this vision of building that, uh, com- that strong community, then strategy is the best way that we're going to move forward. That way we know exactly what we're doing. Of course, things will change as we go along, but to just start to start somewhere and to leave every conversation with uh, some, some direction of action, you know, is what I think that we can do with this group. Yeah. And um, just to circle back to the polls real quick, um, when everyone came in, it looks like there was only two answers. Uh, Everyone was either feeling pretty good or I've been better, which are really just kind of like, (laughs) and I think we're all kind of there too. You know, it's like, I'm not indifferent to everything going on. I'm a little burnt out by everything. I'm Mm -hmm. fed up, tired. I'm, you know, it's just, there's, there's a lot. We've dealt with a lot this year. And the last thing we need is to be more divided. Yeah. Um, so I, I I need people to lean on. You need people to lean on. Call somebody. Check on them, like Marie said. Um, you know, the, it's important to really spend this time connecting rather than becoming further apart. Um, so hopefully you all can join us again and invite people for next week. I will get the next episode up sooner than this one. <laughs> <laughs> yesterday afternoon <laughs> and yeah, yeah. Went missing so <laughs> a couple of the offers went missing as well so we'll get more going <laughs> we'll smooth it all out you know it's just the beginning <laughs> baby steps baby steps. um so yeah so I, i'm just happy that you guys showed up today and uh supported us and hopefully we can keep this going and it was a little terrifying. Marie, how are you doing? <laughs> Absolutely nerve wracked. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My folks already know how I feel about sometimes being live on camera. So I love them and I love everyone for showing up and being patient. This is my very first time being live on camera this way. So, <laughs> yeah. Oh, one last thing Ooh. before stoicism, our courage temperance, justice, and wisdom. Wow. And you see how, like, especially, um, you know, we had Ma'at that was mentioned and stoicism that was mentioned. When you start this journey, you'll realize how these things really do overlap. There is, like, a very central theme to spiritualism and philosophy and just understanding human relationship. You know what I'm saying? So, for those yeah. of us who really are very passionate about community and very clear with the vision that they have for community in the future, then I really would suggest just taking a moment, to hop in a Google search, see what you're called to, and then find that philosophy that really, really works for you. And maybe that leads you to creating your own philosophy too. So yeah, the journey is endless. Yay! And here's your starting point. So on your marks, get set, go. Go! (laughs) (laughs) Um, Russ put in the uh, chat here, um, the Facebook page for Root Optics. Uh, You guys are all welcome to come and make comments, suggestions, um, you know, kind criticisms. (laughs) Yeah, <laughs> but criticisms is definitely welcome. Yeah, <laughs> delicate. <laughs> um, <laughs> Stoicism seems to relate to the pillars of Buddhism, Four Noble Truths, Eightfold Path. Yeah, I, it's it's like just, I don't know. I I read them all as just don't be a jerk. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I'm like I don't know, just be nice to people and like. Put out a little effort. Um, Carol, thank you for this. You you inspiring women. I look forward to continuing this. Thank you. Very cool. Um, And yeah, tell your friends and uh, we won't keep you guys much longer. Um, So thank you. And, you know, my parting words are, you know, what can you do? What does this affect? What's your niche? And what's your action? You know, create an action plan from that. Um, Hopefully that gave you a place to jump off. So thank you for coming, Marie. And join us next week. Let's keep this conversation going. 